China. China appears to be experiencing deflation. Today, we're delving into one of the biggest stories in world headlines. Has China reached its peak? More than 70,000 American companies, big and small, are operating in China. But are they fleeing China, as the Western reports have claimed? We've continued to expand here. The original plan was for this expansion to be based on Mickey and Minnie. A big opening. What a night. In terms of size, I think it's only second to Manhattan stores. Starbucks opening 12,000 new stores, 5,000 of those in China. To understand how American business are doing in China, we decide to see it for ourselves. Aptiv, a $20 billion supplier for automotive industry headquartered in Boston, is a multinational company thriving in China. Simon Yang, president of Aptiv China and Asia Pacific, gave us a tour of the company, including its smart manufacturing sites. Uh, we have been growing uh, with the China auto industry in the last 30 years. Yes. Why do you want to stay this long time in China? China is not only the largest market, which you know, is feeding into our vision and our product strategy. Last year, China produced more than 30 million vehicles. Right? This is one third of the total global production. Our strategy is we're going to continue to be in China for China and continue to grow in China. Uh, recently, we just announced uh, we opened a new manufacturing center uh, in Wuhan. So you're expanding instead of shrinking. We are spending mm -hmm. and we will continuously to invest uh, not only in the manufacturer footprint expansion because capacity requirement mm -hmm. by our customer. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is we're going to continue to invest in our design and research capability in mm -hmm. China. China become an innovation center mm -hmm. for a new energy vehicle. I think there's this great myth that American companies are leaving China, but in fact, American companies aren't leaving China. If we look in 2019, we ask all of our members, are you leaving China? Mm -hmm. Or are you moving manufacturing or supply out of China? And you know what we heard? 9% pre-COVID were moving out of China. Um, we just asked them the same question earlier this year. And you know what the answer was? 11% are moving out of China. So if we look 9% pre-COVID, 11% after COVID, I think what we're seeing is that American companies are moving in and out all of the time at the same rate that they were before. Uh, when we talk to our members, um, about 50% of our members tell us that new investment in China is either their number one or in their top three priority. Over the past few months, the Wall Street Journal has produced over 160 articles in its new column, China's Economic Slowdown. Most of the articles are only available in Chinese, a clearly targeted propaganda campaign. So I think peak China theory uh, really is an intellectually lazy way to think about China. But what's happened is the economy has matured. And so, of course, the growth rate is going to level off. Um, but it's going to continue to grow. And as long as the economy continues to grow, you can't say that you've hit peak China because, well, it's still growing, maybe not at 8%, but it may be 3%, 4%, 5% will continue to grow. If China has problems, then the United States must be on its deathbed. We have heard many theories about Chinese economy, saying Chinese economy is reaching a peak. And how do you think of this kind of theory? But it's not a theory. It would be, it would be to undignified theory to call it theory. It's pure propaganda. China's economy grew twice as fast as the United States, more than twice as fast. China's economy grew 5.2%. The U.S. economy grew 2.5 percent. China's economy grew five times as fast as the European Union. I've been writing on China's economy for more than 30 years. And honestly, during that time, I have not seen so much falsification as is going on at the present time. I made a joke that a good way to make an accurate prediction on China's economy was to take whatever The Economist said, reverse it, and you'll get probably a good prediction to see firsthand how Chinese economy is doing, we visit Dongguan in South China, a city known for its manufacturing capabilities. Every little workshop you see down the street might be producing a crucial component within the global supply chain. Let's talk to someone here from one of the workshops. They might help us understand the resilience of Chinese economy. Someone at the heart of the production. The Xu Jian An and Xu Jian Ming brothers used to work in a 3D printing company as apprentices. 
Last year, they decided to embark on an innovative journey and found their own 3D printing company. Hello, hello. 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 现在它这个三维模型，它这个操作已经很自动化了，这个做工序啊都已经很简单了，而不需要就是说太太太太高了这种这种知识文化。别人发图给你到上机需要多久？啊，最快两个小时吧。打一个像你这么帅气的，<笑>起码上台机同时做的话，就一天吧那样子。传统模具还是要三个半月，这这是最快的。传统模具它打一个。人模模型的话，啊，起码要二十多套；制造一一台汽车的话，啊、要两千多套。有没有生产好？比如说我要一个这个东西，你第二天就能发过来？你提供三维的图形就可以，三那个三维数据最快多少时间能发过来？你这个最快我们晚上就可以给你发。In Dongguang alone, you can find hundreds of companies like Shoes who specialize in the 3D printing. And these small companies pump new blood into the country's technological revolution in manufacturing, forming an ecosystem found nowhere else outside China. China is becoming more of a uh, manufacturing base for more uh, value-added products, uh, less la labor-intensive, less polluted uh, industries, not just simply for GDP growth, but high-quality growth. Right? We have Tesla. Right here in Shanghai, which is a, a, our member, and, and that mega factory uh, sets a great example uh, to the world, actually, even uh, to its uh, peer company in Texas and in Germany. That the labor force here is very strong, and they can they can make world class products here. In a recent survey by Amcham Shanghai, geopolitical tensions was ranked the top concern for American business. To understand the impact of the geopolitical tensions on the business, we visited American business Aptar. Aptar is a global leader in dispensing and packaging, and has been in China for 30 years. In your previous interview with Six Minutes,、uh, you talked about how you feel confident about the Chinese economy, about China-U.S. relations. What's fueling your optimism? I look at fundamentally, we have 1.4 billion people here, and、um, everybody wants to have a better life.、So、it's a wonderful thing to partner with the entrepreneurs in our ecosystem, and of course, we do feel and we see a lot of government support. As you well know, you must have watched your episode with Six Minutes, right? Yes. yes. So, how do you feel about that report? Mostly,、uh, the story from the.、Um, The ambassador, Ambassador Burns,、uh, his uh, perspectives. Uh, let's say that, that they belong to the big picture of the, the ge geo geopolitical dynamics. We don't want to live in a world where the Chinese are the dominant country. And、uh, Ambassador Burns has made it clear that the U.S. does not want China to be the dominant player in the world. What's your take on that? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a very Difficult question to answer, and it's really not in my space to talk about politics.、Mm -hmm. I still think that a lot of things is sometimes we don't need to hear what they say, but also see what's not being said. I, so I still see, think that the overall picture、mm -hmm. uh, comes to life in in a very different way than people probably、mm -hmm. uh, would have imagined about China.、Mm -hmm. Are you worried this kind of disconnect between the reality and the politician rhetoric? Might have some consequences. I definitely was more worried before than now. I think now I, I feel optimistic. I feel things are getting better. 不是有问到吗？中美你中有我，我中有你是怎么回事？就是通过交流嘛，交流合作，最后交融，那不就你中有我，我中有你了吗？思想上也是一样，不同分歧永远会存在。因为他人和人是不一样的，一家人他也是不一样的。但是呢，求大同，存小异。On March 27th, President Xi met with representatives from American business, strategic, and academic communities. 
President Xi rejected the narrative that the economy was collapsing or reaching its peak. For many, it sends a strong signal. Since China reopened, we've received many delegations, visitors from the U.S. And I think it's good for them to see themselves rather than just read, you know, uh, newspapers or watch TV. Uh, it's better to see uh, with their own eyes, right? China uh, is not black and white. Uh, it, you, you need to have more of a nuanced understanding of this country. Of course, there are challenges of this country, but there are still many opportunities. That's why our companies are still here uh, trying to grow uh, successfully. There may be disagreements between the United States and China. That's for governments to sort of work on. What the companies themselves want to do is they will follow the law. That's why I say they don't want to be on the table or on, or on the menu. They're the ones who are making the table. They're the ones who are putting the food on the table, and that's what they want to keep doing.